Hello and welcome to this DCSSU25 video. This video we're going to look at navigation. In the SU25 there's four navigation modes, uh, really three modes and then there's an off mode. So the off mode we're going to call it no task. There's an en route mode, a return mode and a landing mode. And we can cycle through these by clicking on the one key. Now we can see and we can find which mode we're in by looking at the ADI. here and the way we do this is by cycling through until we get to the no task mode so once we have the no task mode then we can find whatever mode we're, we're, we're in or whatever mode we want and we simply do this by cycling the correct number of times so we cycle it once press the one key we get to the en route mode once again we get to the return mode and once again we get to the landing mode and once again get to the back to the en route mode. And we can see how this affects our short range navigation panel lights here on the right hand side which gives us additional information as to what mode we're in. Now I'm not uh, a big fan of this um, this instrument uh, because it's got some limitations um, and we look at those as we go through them. So we're now currently with no navigation information here because we've got our little spots here on the ADI and we're going to press the one key and get it into the en route mode. In the route mode, we can see there's no lights here except one light. Now, this one light represents the um, airfield that we're going to uh, take off from, and it's uh, Gaudata. And the first three lights here are representative of the airfields. First one is always the takeoff, the second one is the landing, and the third one will be any other airfield that you're cycling through that are not a takeoff or a landing airfield. Now in order to cycle, while we're, while we're in this mode, uh, we're in the en route mode, in order to cycle through our waypoints, we can do this by cycling the control apostrophe key. And let's have a look first quickly at our um, navigation map to see where we are and what we're going to be doing. And we look along here, we can see we're going to take a route from Gaudata and we're going to cycle through a number of different uh, waypoints and we're going to land in Sochi Adler. And we can see I've, sep I've, I've purposely selected a separate takeoff from a landing runway uh, to demonstrate how the um, waypoints are cycled in the en route mode. So the takeoff is always considered as waypoint number one, number zero, here. And we cycle through one, two, three, four, five and we can find our way around by cycling through these and when we cycle through when we get to the last one we will always cycle back to the first now in this case we'll cycle back from 5 back to 0 so we'll cycle 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and back to 0 and you wouldn't necessarily notice this if you're taking off and landing at the same uh, airbase because you would think that, th that after 5 you'd be taken back to the number 6 which is the takeoff point but that's, the exa that's actually the way it works so the landing point is not part of this um, en route uh, waypoint sequence it's important to note that so let's go back and look at that in the pit and here we're now currently selected in the en route mode we're selected as the uh, waypoint 0 and we're going to cycle through these by uh, pressing the I think it's control apostrophe it may be different in your case um, you need to maybe just check the options controllers and SU25 in your options menu. So we're going to cycle through it, we're in zero and we're going to cycle through it and we're in one now. And we can confirm this if we look at the uh, bearing point needles here. And I'm going to talk about the needles a little bit in a second but what we're looking at at the moment for the bearing point is the needle with the little, um, the little circle on the end of it. So that's pointing to our currently selected um, navigation point or our steer point you can see it's approximately 220 and if we look back at the map we can see um, it's pointing at number one here and I've n t took a note of the different bearings between the um, the waypoints on that flight plan you can see it's 220 so that's what it's pointing at if we move on to the next point it's number one you can see the needle has changed we're not going to track them all 
and on the next one it's changed again so you can see that's one zero one two three on the map so we're up as far as here and now if we cycle it once more we can see all the lights go out and this is where the confusion and the problems occur because in our no task mode we also have no lights so unless we kind of look back at the um, navigation uh, point we can be confused as to which mode we're in so while we're um, while we're there I'm going to now cycle through we're on uh, steer point 4 or waypoint 4 and I'm going to cycle through to 5 and we can see that our instruments are moving here so uh, we're pointing in the correct direction or our, our instruments are pointing in the correct direction and now when we come back to uh, the last one after 5 we end up back at 0 and we can see our takeoff airfield comes up again and we know we're at our takeoff airfield if you look at this instrument here which is our distance measuring instrument and we can see in kilometers it's 0 so once again cycle through it uh, at our takeoff waypoint 1, waypoint 2, waypoint 3, waypoint 4 waypoint 5 and back to where we started from so that covers pretty much the en uh, route mode so we're going to go now into the uh, ret into the return mode and we do this by cycling the one key and when we go into the return mode by default the airfield selected is always the landing airfield so we can cycle through the different airfields in the same way as we cycle through the en route by clicking on the control and apostrophe uh, key and in the en route in the, in, in the uh, return mode we can see that this light on the right hand side of the second bank of lights is always on it's the only mode that this lights up so we can see very easily by looking down at our our instrument panel or our short range navigation panel whether we're in the uh, what well, sorry if if we are or not in the uh, return mode and the return mode let me explain essentially the return mode is takes us to a fix and um, which allows us uh, an in a, a straight in approach so it takes us to a fix approximately 17 kilometers away from the threshold of the runway we're going to land on and we can demonstrate this by cycling through our, uh, our airfields until we get back to our takeoff airfield and if I do that by cycling through the airfields remember what I said we have a takeoff airfield a landing airfield and this is for all the other airfields now in the theater of operations um, in DCS all the airfields are in a sequence a particular sequence it's a fixed sequence I don't know what it is um, I used to know what it was in uh, the original um, flaming cliffs but I don't know what it is in the current DCS but it is fixed and by cycling um, you can cycle through every individual airfield and we can see that by looking at the distance measuring equipment as it changes and the bearing to the particular runways change and we'll end, eventually end up back here and I'll continue on back until we get that the selected runway is our home plate is our takeoff point and we can see it there so now we're at our takeoff point and remember what we're in we're in the return mode for our takeoff point and we can see if we look at our instrument and that's 17 kilometers away from where we're sitting and it's directly behind us so it's it's if you were if we were taking an approach a landing approach into the, the position we're sitting at on the current runway it would give us a fix 17 kilometers away so you can see the benefit of this uh, it's a nice easy um, way of navigating your way back to your home plate you don't have to worry about the other navigation if you can just navigate to that fix then you're on the threshold for finals now not the threshold you're on um, finals for straight in so let's quickly uh, go on to now the uh, landing mode and remember whatever runway we've selected here when we select uh, the landing mode it it um, changes our, our bearing point to point directly at the runway not a fix off its end but directly at it and because we've selected um, the takeoff point when we do that we're going to see this needle drop down to zero because we're now pointing at our own position es essentially so I'll do this by selecting the one key again and we can see we're now gone down to zero and I'm going to cycle the runways in order to make sure we're set up for our approach to um, Sochi 
and I'll be cycling through this by clicking on that actually we had it there sorry I'm, I'm clicking on the wrong I'm actually changing the mode there so let's go back let's do change our mode back now we're at the no task and we're going to select it three times one two three and now I'm going to cycle through runways until we get to number two which is there um, light number two which tells us we're heading towards our landing runway which is Soshi and we could confirm that by looking out and seeing where this uh, needle is pointing it's 27 28 28 and a half so it is pointing generally in that direction but believe me it's um, it is pointing on that runway so that pretty much covers the three modes uh, before I move on I just want to talk about very quickly the knee board uh, once again you're going to have to check the keys there I think it's control or shift key toggles it on or off and in the knee board it gives you some additional information it's kind of trying to um, it's trying to mimic a um, you know maybe a moving map display or a tad or something like that um, and uh, it's your preference as to whether you need to use it or not I generally don't like to use it um, and uh, you can cycle through the different pages uh, using the you know the the left or right square brackets, and you can see various information. You can also you can also get a fix, and I'll show you that when we're in the air. You can get a fix on where your actual position is. I'll switch that off again. So let's uh, set up for a quick takeoff, and we're going to travel this route. Uh, we're going to travel one, two, three, and before we re reach three, we're going to change from the en route mode to the return mode, and we're going to get a fix for Soshi and then from the uh, return mode we're going to uh, switch into landing and we're going to land at Soshi so let's make sure we're set up um, for our en route mode to waypoint number one and let's switch our lights on here and I'm going to go back into our en route mode cycling the shift apostrophe key and we're we're in the en route mode and we can see we're at steer point zero so we're going to change it to steer point one and now we're set and we need to be turning onto a bearing of two one two approximately two two zero after uh, takeoff there's a couple of final checks make sure our altimeter is set flaps down to one and uh, ready to roll Here up, flaps up. Gear hasn't come up. There we are. Okay, we're going to target our altitude at a thousand, but it's going to be hard to manage this while I'm talking through this. It actually requires a lot of concentration to maintain altitude um, and uh, direction in this aircraft. We don't have the luxury of a autopilot system. So we're now heading towards um, our bearing point needle, and I want to talk about those needles now very quickly for a moment. We've got two needles here, and the important part of those needles are what we see in the northern. Uh, part or the upper part of the hemisphere there it's the little circle uh, it's the needle with the little circle on the top is our bearing point needle and the one with the kind of um, little housey kind of uh, image there uh, rectangle with a an arrow on it is the 
course deviation indicator and the course deviation indicator works a little bit differently than it does in um, a Western aircraft. Course deviation indicator is normally a vertical bar that r that moves to the left or right. And in the American, in the um, Western aircraft, if it moves to the left, it means you you need to turn your aircraft to the left uh, to the left to intercept the course. In this case, it actually does the opposite. If it's to the right, it means that um, your your course is to the left. And you need to be moving. You need to be turning to the left to intercept the course. And if you saw what we did, is we took off from the runway and we went too, a little bit too far. So the course is on our left hand side. We turned left, so the the correct course is on our left hand side. We're 13 kilometres away from where we should be now, and uh, we're deviated a little bit. And the deviation is represented by the by the um, the angle between our course to the correct uh, navigation point and the correct course to the navigation point. So you can see at the moment we're slightly to the right of the course. So if this is in, if this is pointing to the right, it means we are to the right, and so we need to be turning to the left to do to intercept the course. I'm not going to worry about it for this leg, um, but we will have a look at it when we turn onto our next leg. We're coming down now. Um, the other thing here is when we um, uh, when we reach the currently selected waypoint in the en route mode, the navigation system automatically changes it to the next um, navigation point in the sequence. So it's not necessarily a good idea to let this happen because you end up overshooting navigation point, and then when you want to turn on to the course, uh, the next. Um, course to the next uh, waypoint uh, you tend to be uh, deviated and I'll show you what what happens here so you can see we've reached it and now we've changed and you can see that that flick of the um, course deviation needle is the final indication that we're now en route to the next uh, the next waypoint so we're travelling up a little bit too high. I did want to stay around a thousand, but went out of my mind. So we're turning onto this course, and you see what's happening now. And if we look at our map, it's a right turn, a sharp right turn, to go onto the course for steer point two. And consequently, what we've what we've done is we've ended up going too far here, and now we're heading in this direction, but we're to the left of our course and we will see when I line out we will see the the, the way this appears on our horizontal situation indicator you can see now remember what I said we're to the left of our course so that needle is pointing to the left so in order to get onto the course we need to actually turn to the right and I'm going to show where we are on the um, on the knee pad by clicking on the control K key I think it is and we can see we're to the left of our course so I have to watch our altitude now drop it down a little bit too quickly so we've deviated off now what I want to do is I want to bring us back on course so I need to turn to the right so now by turning to the right I'm actually starting to head towards the course so I'm going to intercept the course and the way I know I've intercepted the course is when I've pulled that um, course deviation indicator over the bearing point needle. So when those two are absolutely coincident, I'm now I would be net then on the correct course. So the course is somewhere out in front of me here, and I'm heading towards it. And as soon as I've reached it, you can see those two needles will coincide, and they're nearly there now. So I need to start turning back. So I don't lose it or overshoot it and that looks pretty good 
Gonna roll out now. And another indication I'm on course is when this vertical bar here is aligned vertically. It's a kind of a fine fine adjustment here. If there's any slight deviation, this bar will be deviated here. And the other bar here, the vertical the horizontal bar, indicates that we're either high or low, and I'm gonna track down to our correct altitude now, which is a thousand. Now that we're pretty much aligned to correct direction. And you can see now as we start to hit our target altitude that line centers okay try and trim the aircraft now Okay, we're heading towards steer point uh, two. So we're looking good. And you can see we're tracking down to eight kilometers away. So I'm going to, let's have a look at our, where we're turning to next. We're gonna be doing a left turn here. So, when we get down to about uh, four kilometers I'm going to start tracking into the turn and I'm going to try and intercept the course rather than overshoot it this time a bit of deviation there a little bit low in altitude still okay okay I'm going to I'm going to now change steer point by manually clicking it myself and now I'm going to turn on to the onto the new steer point so you can see the two needles are tracking close to each other so I can slow down my turn in order to intercept it just when the two are meeting together so you can see it's getting close now getting close getting close so there roll out now we should be pretty close to that correct course now now we're slight deviation still however still a lot better than the way we did it last time so make an adjustment there So our needle is still to the right. We've got a good distance to go, so I've got time to make an adjustment on it. So I'm going to roll out to it just slightly. And now let's roll back. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just rising in altitude a little bit there, drop it down. So we've got 30 kilometers to go. Another problem with the um, the short range navigation panel there is that I just need to make an adjustment here. Sorry. Okay. Is that if we are in the um, landing mode and we're landing at airport number one, it 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 indicates the same as if we were in the en route mode. 
for number one so you don't really know what mode we're in and the difference there is that in the en route mode you don't have ILS on but in the landing mode you do have ILS on so I'm kind of I would kind of uh, recommend that you avoid having to use this if possible and through the cycling here uh, know what steer points you're heading towards and just use the upper line here to know what runway you're, you're approaching so a little bit high let's drop down okay so we're going to somewhere before uh, 3 here we're going to start turning in and then um, intercept our fix our navigation fix our return fix we're going to do this by simply um, changing the mode to the return mode and it should take us onto our landing runway here with when this light runs on so we're 15 kilometers now so we might as well do it now save some time okay let's start turning Now this mode we don't have to worry, you can see the, the slide tells us we're in return mode and in this mode we actually don't have to worry um, about the course deviation, it gives us no information. So we just have to track into the uh, particular bearing point needle indication so I'm going to just zoom in on this for the moment and I'm going to drop down altitude ten kilometers away so we're not that not that um, not that far away we're a good bit up in altitude I always like to keep my uh, descent needle on the scale because that way at least you have some idea what descent rate you're taking if it's gone down to here you really have no indication of how fast you're traveling down or up unless you're looking outside the window which is probably a good idea anyway okay coming up to four I'm gonna put air brakes on because we're gonna be three tracked off a little bit okay you've seen it flicked over there so it's automatically gone to the uh, landing mode so I'm going to now track onto this so we're now in the landing mode and you can see our ILS needles have come into play and because we've overshot this we're going to be offset a little bit so I'm going to have to offset by a few degrees to the right here to track onto the course or too far left of the course roll out watch my altitude watch my distance I'm only 14 from the threshold now so I need to be careful okay we're on the Light slope two. Okay, now we're seem to be in line now, so I need to turn on. That's close. So I'm gonna look out the pit now. So we're pretty much lined up for that. Slightly to the right, but it's good, so let's get set up for landing. Laps landing. Now our ILS needles are working. We're a little bit high, so we're going to track down. You can see our vertical 
and horizontal lines on the bar there they're centering I'm going to just do a visual approach here now does take a while to spool up this engine when you push it you only get a response after a few seconds I'm way too low Install it. Should be good, okay now. Hard shoot out. Not a perfect landing, but you know they say any landing you can walk away from is a good one. Okay, that's um, by way of uh, an explanation of the navigation system in the SU25. Um, I hope it helps some people, and I hope it endears some people to the SU25 because it is a wonderful aircraft to fly, and by far my favourite in the DCS series. And if you have any comments or feedback, feel free. And thanks for watching.